should I get up? Should I get up? Why am I not get up? I'm a loser. Oh my god, I'm horrible. I will never be able to get up. I hurt myself. I want to die. I'm a loser. I hurt myself. I want to die. I'm a loser. I hurt myself. I want to die. I'm a loser. I hurt myself. I want to die. If, if you're suffering of depression, <laughs> you're not a piece of shit because of that. It's everything else. <laughs> If you start thinking maybe I need to look after my mental health, it's probably too late. Like you should have started like a few weeks ago. <laughs> I think if you grow up the way I did, um, mental health or mental illnesses or in general just were considered such a you know such an outsider topic that you just thought this is not something that affects me. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, so, like, it, it's like when you lack words to describe things. Do you feel uh, now m calling it depression was it a big step for you? Yeah, because suddenly, like, I could admit mm -hmm. that it's something that is recurring, mm -hmm. that I need to keep an eye on, mm -hmm. uh, that is not my fault and mm -hmm. doesn't define me. Like, yeah. if I have an episode like that, it does not mean that I am lazy, unworthy, incapable of things, right? Like, I'm not a piece of shit. Hello! This is It's Mental Podcast. Today we have a special guest. How do you pronounce your name? I don't know. Uh, Francesco Tiesha. Oh, so where are you from? I was born and raised in Rome uh -huh. um, from a German mother and an Italian father. So why you have a last name sounds like uh, Polish? It's uh, German. It's German? It's a German name, yes. Okay, okay. It's just very complex. We just threw as many you know, consonants as we could there. Yeah, that sounds... Mm, are you sure you're not Polish? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, my family... German side seems to come from like North Rhine, the Sun, and like West Germany in general. Cool. Uh, what do you do in Berlin? Um, well, I moved here after finishing high school in Rome because uh -huh. I, you know, seen what the city is like, uh -huh. enjoyed it a lot, and decided to move. And um, yeah, ever since you know, I started studying, dropped out uh -huh. because I already had a career in tech, like startups. Uh -huh. um, then I did a lot of freelancing as designer and product uh -huh. manager, and uh, my you know professional career is as a software product manager. So I'm a product owner. At Mercedes Benz IO uh -huh. uh, currently, and apart from that, I do comedy, as you know. So like people, you know. people actually can go on LinkedIn and find you. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, uh, do you feel comfortable with uh, your uh, professional career combined with your dark comedy? What dark yeah. comedy are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I am. Yes. I mean, I stand behind what I say on stage, of course, and. Um, but I don't have any clips online anyway because okay. I am trying to. Not out here now? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is not my comedy, so this is fine. But generally speaking, I don't put like clips online because I think I've got a lot to progress as a comedian. Mm -hmm. And I would rather like, you know, work on the craft for a few years and then, like, when I think I'm solid enough, stop and uh, never show anybody anything. Oh, cool. So, how many years have you been doing comedy? Uh, five, five, yeah, five years, mm -hmm. pretty much. Well, um, and uh, uh, this show is about uh, mental health. So, <laughs> do, do you mind that you talk a little bit about your relationship with uh, the the topic? Oh wow, this is very straightforward. <laughs> um, well, I do suffer from depressive episodes mm -hmm. and uh, and I've also like dated people who had very strong anxiety that kind of thing so I mm -hmm. got exposed to mm -hmm. also different kinds of difficulties so yeah and uh, last year I also almost burned out and uh, that was also a wake-up call so those kinds of things yeah wow 
So uh, it, it's 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 uh, before the show we were talking. We said uh, like, um, uh, if you are a comedian, you must have some issues. Yeah, I do think that if if you see somebody being funny, I mm -hmm. think humor is mainly a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. And I don't trust anybody who's really funny and pretends they don't have any mental health issues at all or gone through some shit. So, um, uh, if uh, you need to choose between uh, having this uh, comedy skill, being funny, and uh, being mentally totally healthy, would you try it? Oh wow, that's a tough one. Oof. So I, I saw an interview with David Lynch mm -hmm. uh, once where he talked about that he was not getting therapy because he went to a first session with a therapist and asked how it would impact his creativity mm -hmm. and said it will have a, an impact on it. And so he said, okay, no therapy for me. Uh, I'm not David Lynch. Mm -hmm. um, <sighs> hmm. I love comedy so much. It's, uh, it's, it would be a tough trade. Um, I guess like the thing is like when I do well, and I've got my habits in order mm -hmm. and, you know, I sleep all right and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Then it's like mental health is kind of under control and I don't feel like I would rather like keep doing comedy and keep, you know, steady and stable in my personal life and just know that it could happen, that it affects me. Okay, so then, you, you, you still want to be funny, but uh, somehow stable. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, yeah. would you give up being funny for being mentally healthy? Uh, I... Mm, probably yes, because if mm. you, you... Now it's hard to give up because you tasted how funny yeah. it is. But if you are mentally healthy and never be funny, you don't know you are not funny. You don't know you are boring. <laughs> Uh, I'm, it's not that, yeah, uh, probably, yeah, I mean, do you know that as a comedian you meet like random muggles who don't do comedy and they're trying to like be funny and it's just very cringy and do you ever think about that, how it must feel like? Like I forgot how it is. I, I, I think like uh, um, before I start to go on stage, I wanted, uh, I always try to make jokes, but uh, of course in my culture it doesn't exist uh, because uh, people like, uh, you need to be serious even as a, like a child and mm. making joke is a bad uh, uh, quality and uh, people always uh, complain so that I, I kind of like fear like uh, that's probably how it feels like and also when I mm. wanted to do comedy uh, people around me they ask me if I'm funny. Wow. So really? so yes, yeah. I I think also there's different types of comedians. For example, there's comedians like uh, they are funny even when they are at a dinner table when they just talk yeah. with people. They are humorous and they are fast. But uh, <laughs> my comedy is kind of like awkward comedy. Yeah. So <laughs> so like it's uh, when I actually talking with people. Uh, sometimes they, I, I guess many of them would think in mind, like, is she really a comedian? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's true. I mean, um, I feel like as a comedian, when you go on stage and you're funny all the time, mm -hmm. and then if people want you to be funny in other contexts, mm -hmm. it's almost you're like, look, I'm, I'm not working right now. Just leave me be. Oh, I, I don't believe you are that type because no. uh, we just had dinner and yeah. my boyfriend almost... Uh, uh, choke himself because you were just just because he's kinky, you know, yeah. like he was. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I I don't know. That was a horrible joke. Cut <laughs> that out. Um, yeah, I mean, I do think, but then like the way I do comedy after a few years, it's like less like oh, I've got my wit bitten out. Mm -hmm. It's more like kind of crowd worky, mm -hmm. kind of just loose improvisation. Mm -hmm. It's not like at the level of Ori if he's been, but um, yeah. Oh, we'll talk more about the comedy later. Now let's uh, mental health, mental health uh, first. 
So when did you realize, when is the first time you think you have some issues to work on? Um, probably like in my mid-twenties, but the thing is like, I feel at least like for a lot of men in particular, it's like you don't want to believe it that you might have issues like that, yeah. right? Like there's the stigma attached to it and you just generally feel like it would be a sign of weakness or something mm -hmm. and you cannot believe it would happen to you right mm -hmm. and i think for years i just thought oh that's just how it is mm -hmm. um and didn't realize it's something and then uh one ex-girlfriend uh, mm -hmm. at some point was like you realize you're depressed right uh, but but did you realize before that um i think i had I had started to recognize it, yeah, and uh, but again, you know, like it takes time, I think, to find the acceptance that that is the case. Also, because like you always compare yourself to those who have it way worse than you, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Um, and then it feels like, ah, come on, maybe, maybe this just sadness, yeah. like. What, what was was there the phase that you kind of know you are depressed, but uh, but uh, you don't really want to admit it, but it's more like joking about it. Yeah, joking or or just not. You just don't think about it mm -hmm. in that way, mm -hmm. right? Like you just, you know, I've spent like in hindsight, you know, like I've had periods where I was like. Um, closed in my room for mm -hmm. months like mm -hmm. sleeping on the floor mm -hmm. and like clearly not fixing things mm -hmm. and i did not think about it as something that was maybe something you could you know treat or mm -hmm. that you could think about in a specific way it was yeah. just like i'm well, going through a rough phase what well, was it like uh, you were in the room for months this would be, I don't know, over 10 years ago. Like 10 in, years ago. Yeah, like in my mid 20s. Um, and this happened uh, uh, before when you were, uh, that girlfriend told you you are depressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, basically, like over time, I realized that these kind, this kind of situation gets triggered by specific circumstances mm -hmm. when I you know try to do too much mm -hmm. um, particularly if I do too much and don't want to admit that I might need help and you know the, the usual yeah. and so like over the years I've gotten better and better at um, just giving myself a support system that would avoid getting into that state mm -hmm. and sometimes it would slip mm -hmm. But overall, I think over the years, I've gotten better at just keeping steady most mm -hmm. of the time mm -hmm. and uh, recognize better when something is changing. Mm -hmm. you know? I don't know how it's been for you, but... I, I, I think uh, similar. I think mm -hmm. I'm getting better, but sometimes it slips. Uh, but uh, when, now I, when I sleep, I, I kind of feel it's... Uh, I see it differently because mm -hmm. when my first time when I had a depression, yeah. Uh, I read the studies, uh, they say uh, yeah, the chance of relapse is very high. Mm. And uh, uh, after I recovered from my first depression, I was like, I hope it will not, I will not relapse mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I never want to experience that again. But when it happened again, um, I realized it's not as bad as I thought mm. because uh, when it happened again, yes, it's still depression, but I have tools. I have, yeah. I have ways to deal with it. So you don't feel helpless. You yeah. Don't feel like, yeah. And then I see it's like a slowly it's getting better. It's still kind of bad, but it's on a better direction. So it's mm. kind of, even it still happens, but for me it shows hope. Mm. So I uh, and uh, every time when it happens, I it doesn't happen that often, but. Uh, <laughs> But, but uh, when it happens, like I, I learn something, like uh, maybe not mm. a, just a full depression, maybe like a small breakdown. Yeah. I learned, oh, what triggered me this breakdown and uh, what can I do next time to not have this happen? Yeah, and, and I feel like at least 
once you recognize mm -hmm. or accept that mm -hmm. this is part of something in you mm -hmm. that doesn't define you necessarily mm -hmm. it's just something that will happen like it made it easier for me to just take a pause and mm -hmm. not um, stepping back basically mm -hmm. one of the things that I tend to do is being very self-critical mm -hmm. um, yeah right and so I would even in a depressive episode, I would find reasons mm -hmm. to criticize myself about being in that state. And, mm -hmm. you know, like um, my inner monologue was mm -hmm. basically like just the bad advice that people give to depressed people. It's like, <laughs> you, right? So, so like my mind would tell me, you know, like, uh, why don't you just get up and uh, why don't you just do this? Mm -hmm. You know, like, come on, like, just cheer up, you know, do something. And but but uh, once you know you are depressed. Once you know, you yeah. can, you can yeah. deal with it yeah. differently. You, yeah. And you, yeah. you're not like, I'm a failure or something. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm going through a phase like yeah. that yeah. again. And, you yeah. know, it's... I, I think, like, yeah, you are, it's like your reflection, your muscle reflect in this negative way to, to communicate with yourself. But uh, compared with your first depression, at that time you don't, you didn't know it's wrong, yes. and then now like uh, it might still happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you recognize the next pattern, you say, "Oh, then this you, is, you yeah. can step back and say, I, I shouldn't have done that. I should not continue doing this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, just in general, you also learn tactics mm -hmm. of how to deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. Like depression for me mainly manifests as like a lot of loss of willpower mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. being unable to deal with things that usually would not be a big deal and mm -hmm. so like i think a lot about ways where things that i know are necessary for me mm -hmm. you know like decent nutrition you know like mm -hmm. that kind of thing that mm -hmm. i have fallbacks where mm -hmm. if i don't feel like cooking because mm -hmm. you know that or even just shopping groceries mm -hmm. I know I can, you know, like get these things that are, you know, already done and yeah. there's no effort yeah, yeah. just to make sure that at least I eat mm -hmm. healthy, you know. Yeah. And uh, with your uh, first time when this girlfriend told you you are depressed, were you offended? W what's your reaction? I felt, uh, no, I think I didn't want to agree with the label. Mm -hmm. Not because I thought what she saw was not true, mm -hmm. but more because you compare yourself to certain imagery of like mm -hmm. how bad yeah, depression okay. is for other people or something, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, and you know, I don't have suicidal thoughts, that kind of thing, but you never had, uh, I don't have thoughts of actively committing suicide. Oh, okay. I have periods where I'm like. I mean, if it's over, it it's flows over. over. It's it's more like I don't. If it's over, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like if I get hit by a car, whatever. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. But I would never seek to end my life. Like mm -hmm. it's that level. But right? do do you have this kind of like uh, self hurting thoughts? Like uh, just go through your mind. You don't want to act on it, but it is in your mind sometimes. To hurt myself, no. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah, yeah I am. Yeah. Again, you know, like there's a spectrum and, oh. you know, like I know that I'm not like mm -hmm. at the very, you know, mm -hmm. most intense end mm -hmm. of that spectrum. Um, but it is still mm -hmm. something. And like, in a way, not being at a very distinct, like very clearly, like this is, yeah, this is extremely bad for you, mm -hmm. you must get treated and mm -hmm. uh, makes it more difficult to admit that it is yeah. a problem. And, yeah, you know, I, I totally agree with you. Right. And for instance, I did not seek therapy because mm -hmm. I thought like there's so few, you know, so many, uh, just not enough spots mm -hmm. for therapy. Mm -hmm. I would take it away from somebody who really needs it, right? Like, you're that, so sweet. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think this is a little more like an avoidance uh, mechanism, maybe. Yeah, like, oh, uh, you, you are afraid of taking actions, then you make a reason maybe, for yeah. helping others. Yeah, maybe. You know, mm -hmm. like, um, I cannot be sure that that's not the case, uh -huh. but it did feel like, uh, I mean, do I really need it? You know, uh -huh. like, I know it would help, but uh -huh. is it absolutely necessary? You so know, like then what you did 
uh, out of that time? Um, I ended up doing, uh, again, like something that was easy to do, mm -hmm. which was like seeking like remote therapists mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And okay. That helped me. And reading, you know, therapy books, mm -hmm. um, that helped me for sure. You know, and just, you know, again, um, it depends on where you are mm -hmm. with your mental health. For me, again, like it's, it's one that if I pay attention to my physical health mm -hmm. as well, and just, you know, having margin, not overworking myself, it's very manageable. Mm -hmm. And um, in that way, how should I put it? I found like to have very strong attention at, mm -hmm. you know, like sleeping enough, mm -hmm. hydrating enough, being sure I get all my vitamins, mm -hmm. uh, that I see friends that I, mm -hmm make sure I've got something fun and mm -hmm. happy to look forward to, like mm -hmm. scheduling things that, mm -hmm. you know, make me happy. Like particularly during lockdown, like when every day is the same, like having something that you're looking forward to, you know, like a lot of these mm -hmm. kind of tricks, the basics mm -hmm. um, that you, you know, I now keep a very strict eye on. Mm -hmm. So uh, now it's uh, 10 years since you first time. Right. Uh, and we're first had, or mm -hmm. first way it was, really bad mm -hmm. i think like before that i just thought oh i've got i'm so lazy sometimes mm -hmm. or something you know mm -hmm. um where i realized oh this doesn't seem healthy or normal mm -hmm. yeah right it's not like oh i like to play video games right now mm -hmm. and uh, oh fuck i didn't finish one thing for university in all semester mm -hmm. um where it was more like I am in this, like if I step out of my body and look at my situation right now, this mm -hmm. looks scary and oh, bad, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It looks like I've let myself go entirely. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where I realized, oh, maybe I need to keep an eye on that. But it took me years to just admit that mm -hmm. it was not just like something happening. <laughs> yeah. When uh, that episode happened, uh, do you, how long took you to kind of uh, reach to a place you say, I think I'm good, fine now, I'm out of this now? Good question. Um, I, f I don't know. Um, I feel like there's been like this spectrum where over several years I had like periods where it was pretty dark mm -hmm. and then like it was not good but mm -hmm. in comparison it seemed fine mm -hmm. right and so I think it took actually years to really uh, get back but like out of the worst probably eight to nine months mm -hmm. oh wow that's uh, quite good yeah mm -hmm. exactly but again like it's you know, spectrum kind of thing. I, I think it's funny because when you say eight to nine months, I thought, oh, that's really good. But if a person who's depressed now and you tell them it will only take eight to nine months for them to get out of it, they were like, fuck you. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, it depends, right? Like that episode took that. And, yeah. I, and I think like I just spent a lot of years where it was just mm -hmm. permanently a little bit mm -hmm. with me. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, do you do you think uh, um, how did you start to do comedy? Um, actually, as a, I, I think for you it was like some sort of like related to yeah, yeah for yeah. me for me um, back in twenty fourteen fifteen mm -hmm. I had been working for an NGO in West yeah. Africa during the Ebola response and um, the year before was so far like the best of my life and because mm -hmm. I was I was working out like three to four times a week eating mm -hmm. super healthy you know, mm -hmm. like keep and so mm -hmm. like I had the energy and so on and, and like things were going well like, career wise and mm -hmm. then like I decided to work for this NGO and I went mm -hmm. to West Africa and just suddenly like all my habits fell away uh -huh. I couldn't like take care of myself as I used to uh, and I was just in this situation where I was doing fine right mm -hmm. like i was you know a white person working for an ngo <laughs> yeah. uh, i was doing fine but uh, you cannot help but be impacted uh -huh. and, and actually like the current situation with the pandemic yeah. 
has helped me realize how badly I was doing. Uh -huh. Because at the time, I would not let myself admit mm -hmm. that I was struggling with living in an epidemic. But you were at that time. You already had your like your first yeah, uh, yeah. episode. How how yeah, come you wouldn't admit that at that time? You already at the time. Life. I still didn't label mm -hmm. label it, and I thought it would, I didn't like these things are make sense looking back, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. I don't know how it was for you, yeah. right? Like the first few times, maybe you don't really understand that it's happening or that mm. that is what it is right? yeah yeah and so like in hindsight i'm gonna tell you yeah that's that was one mm -hmm. at the time i didn't realize when did you start to label it you said because you, the first times you didn't label it uh i didn't what did label it as a depression oh label it yeah um yeah i don't know like i just i think if you grow up the way I did um, mental health or mental illnesses or in general just were considered such a you know such an outsider topic that you just thought this is not something that affects me right mm -hmm. like so like it it's like when you lack words to describe things I understand what you say mm -hmm. in the Chinese context mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, is it the same in the West? Not not these days, but mm. you know, I'm 35. When I grew up, like I didn't know anybody who would openly mm. say that mm. they had depression. Or so mm -hmm. like I knew, kind of, sorta mm -hmm. of maybe that person's husband seems mm. to be you know, seems to have it. And, you know. Yeah, they have some like a coded yeah, words. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. and uh, and so like you don't. You don't see it as something that could affect you. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. just how yeah. of how you think about yourself, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. and that's why. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you, do you feel uh, now calling it depression was it a big step for you? Yeah, massive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just um, because suddenly, like, I could admit mm -hmm. that. It's something that is recurring mm -hmm. that I need to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not my fault and mm -hmm. doesn't define me. Like, yeah. if I have an episode like that, it mm -hmm. does not mean that I am lazy, unworthy, mm -hmm. incapable of things. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I'm not mm -hmm. a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. It's just a phase where sure? I'm dealing with something. <laughs> well, yes, but for other reasons. Right? Like, <laughs> It's definitely not. If if you're suffering of depression, you're not a piece of shit because of that. It's everything else. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, right. Just that when it happens, like I now mm -hmm. can think about it in a certain way, and it's not. It doesn't like attack me, my identity. Mm -hmm. you know? What made you to switch this mental? A uh, blocker, like uh, get rid of this mental blocker to to just actually call it, um, call it a relationship. Um, frankly, just uh, the whole mental health discourse these mm -hmm. days is yeah. just much more helps you be more open about it because, mm -hmm. like, they are working on removing the stigma. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, I met people who told me they were depressed and mm -hmm. I was like oh okay because you know there were people that yeah. seemed just like me yeah and like very much just like me yeah you know? <laughs> and so um instead of being like this thing that I didn't understand that people I didn't know might yeah. have had yeah it became a thing that good friends um have it um yeah. and were the public discourse around yeah. it is not punishing but it's yeah. more like hey this exists and yeah. you know it's not your fault and you know it's there's no shame in it yeah. it happens to a lot of people yeah. so i think just years of yeah. like that helps yeah. you know yeah. i i also feel like uh, uh, right now um in china was very hard like uh, if mm. uh, we say someone i remember when i was 18 my mom has a, um, a friend, her daughter has depression, 
And the way he talk, uh, we talk about it, it's like always gossiping behind people's back. Yeah. And it's like uh, uh, they make so many speculations and mm -hmm. making it sound the the other girl is like her life is ruined and it's it's so scary. Uh, and at that time, I was like, mm, this sounds so like uh, I just feel like uh, it's kind of is for losers. And uh, I, I also feel yeah. I would never get it. Like I'm so strong, so positive. But now thinking back, I was depressed the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And comedy for me, just like it has been for you, like mm -hmm. um, was suddenly an outlet mm -hmm. at a time where I was feeling pretty badly. Mm -hmm. You know, and I returned from West Africa to Berlin. I mm -hmm. was meeting this good friend of mine, and it was November. Mm -hmm. 2015 uh, and she had said that hey um you know i had this new year's resolution from mm -hmm. back in january <laughs> to do like five minutes of comedy mm -hmm. and i want to go to this open mic mm -hmm. and do some comedy would you like to join you know like let's do it together kind of thing it, oh my god so you went with a friend i went with a friend yeah a friend a friend told me they want to do it i went along uh, we went to Sunday Slips, uh, yeah. Berlin institution for those not from Berlin, and uh, we both did five, and I just kept doing it. You know what? It's such a cliche. It is. And it happens. Yeah. O I Oliver had the same story. I was like, uh, really? Everyone says this story. <laughs> like, uh, it actually happens. I thought that they are all fake. No, I, I've, I've always loved comedy, mm -hmm. but I'd never thought about doing it myself, mainly because I didn't know there was an English language comedy mm -hmm. scene in Berlin. Mm -hmm. I, didn't know, I didn't know what an open mic was. I uh -huh. didn't know people would give somebody who has never done anything uh -huh. just five minutes of stage time mm -hmm. and see if you're funny. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, like I did it and then I figured out there was this, it was a possibility. And uh -huh. suddenly I went all in. I returned to West Africa for like two months again, but mm -hmm. so like I did three shows, uh, then I went back, mm -hmm. and then I returned for good mm -hmm. um, after a very you know dark period in my family. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I just used comedy to numb mm -hmm. myself. Yeah, huh? yeah. Right? Like I I don't know if it was healthier for you, but for me it was. I would work all day. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I would go do comedy and, you know, and drink mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, just it would not allow me to be home alone with my thoughts. I would like wake up, go to work, then write, mm -hmm. do comedy and go back and just fall asleep. And uh -huh. I would not have like moments. How was your first set? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's been five years ago. I, want, I remember that Liliana Supek, the host, uh, she said, uh, yeah, there were funny bits in there, keep those and cut the rest, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm still trying to do. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, yeah, that's how it started. And um, I mean, uh, some of the jokes from that, sadly, I still do on very occasionally. Uh -huh. um, but just because like the first time you go on stage, you think about all the funny things you've said in your entire life and try to pick the ones that you remember. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there might be something to them. But Before comedy, did you, did you know you are funny? <laughs> um, oh my God. The thing is like, I don't remember what it was like, mainly because five years later, what I, would I think I was funny if I met myself from five years ago? Probably not. But at that time, like before you do comedy, did you always know you are a funny guy? Did any people tell you you are funny? Are yeah. you always the guy who makes jokes? I was making a lot of jokes back in school, now that I think of it. Yeah. Like I, I never thought about, like to me, like comedy was something that started 2015 and mm -hmm. I just did it. But yeah, in school I was making a lot of jokes. Uh, my Teachers were always very despairing at me because I would, uh, I used to be a very good student, but I was also like the class clown kind of thing. Uh -huh. And so like, they kind of liked to have a good student, but uh -huh. I would make fun of them as uh -huh. well. You know, and it was difficult. But yeah, no, people did tell me I was funny, I guess. Cool.
And uh, were you creative in, in other ways before this? Uh, I used to do, uh, I used to play guitar in a progressive metal band mm -hmm. uh, that originally was called Ex Profundis and later was called Artificial Mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, we didn't have many live gigs, but we, you know, met each week at least once, if not twice, uh, for years. Yeah. I used to live with my keyboarder in the band, uh, Gig Wasser, <laughs> and, um, you know, yeah, I used to do music. Nowadays, not so much, just because, like, comedy takes up so much time, you know. So, do you see yourself more a comedian or a musician? Comedian, mm -hmm. by far, yeah. yeah. Um, although I think like if I had time to just do creative mm -hmm. stuff, I would probably do more like I'm also a designer, not mm -hmm. a particularly good visually one, mm -hmm. uh, you know, visuals yeah. wise, but I do enjoy just putting stuff out and mm -hmm. writing and mm -hmm. you know, like I would probably do something like a screenplay or something mm -hmm. like I would try a lot of different things, I think. H how long it uh, take you? to uh, realize comedy is your thing? Uh, five minutes. <laughs> yeah, really? yeah. Not like the, the first show I, I did, I was like, this is fun. I like mm -hmm. it. Um, we, uh, I guess if I had bombed horribly, it would be different, but I enjoy it. It's, uh -huh. it's fun. Like, and oh my God, like it gives me so much joy in so many ways. And the difference with music is like the kind of music I want to play mm -hmm. is music where in the band we were six people mm -hmm. and we were adults, you know, mm -hmm. like we're not teenagers in a garage, we're adults. Everybody has a job, like mm -hmm. one has a kid, mm -hmm. the other one is the founder of an agency, you know, like it was difficult to find time and coordinate. And if you wanted to do a live gig, it was like this whole logistics thing. Uh -huh. Call me, I just, you know, take the S plan and be way too noikling probably mm -hmm. and uh, then I go on stage like I'm all I need you know? mm -hmm. it's a very naked and pure yeah. art for me that's what I like yeah cool and uh, uh, how long it took uh, for you to call yourself a comedian I don't call myself a comedian you <laughs> uh, never tell people you're a comedian um I've I think I've started some point around I guess 2019 so like yeah four years in uh -huh. i think because i had done two runs of the edinburgh fringe and uh -huh. like the second run in particular was so much fun uh -huh. and i was like yeah it's it's useless to hide uh -huh. i i love this so much uh -huh. and uh, yeah cool and and do you, do you feel like uh, 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 in those years have you ever got yourself a pee at all uh, have you ever got to see a therapist, psychotherapist? Um, yeah, I, um, I now need to find a new one, but uh, yeah, and uh, it is helpful. I mean, you know, if you're watching this, probably you already go to therapy. If you don't, please do. And if you can afford it, if you can find somebody. If you cannot afford a therapist, you can join my weekly mental health support group. And uh, we, uh, so uh, every first and the third week, uh, we do book club. We talk about the book, uh, Lost Connections by uh, Johan Harry. And the uh, second and the fourth week, we do storytelling and hangout. So follow me and uh, join my group. Like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, I, I actually found it funny, you know, uh, just like you, like you said, uh, mm. you kind of fear something but didn't want to label it yeah i actually i met quite some of these people like they they would watch my show they mm. would come to my mental health support group and they will like the way they talk also indicates something is wrong but they would say i don't have any mental illness i'm very healthy i am just curious i just want to make friends and uh, like you, you see that in denial yeah, yeah, I think denial is like the worst thing about it, yeah. you know. And, and I, I feel like uh, many people, it, it's like just like Berlin people about the relationship. You, they yeah. would like move, basically move in with someone and call it uh, like casual dating. Mm. 
but the, with, with depression, it's the same. Most of people like they they have some issues, but they don't want to just put a name on it, which yeah. I find is quite problematic mm-hmm. because um, uh, by just having the name, you have so many speci- specific tools related to it, mm. and uh, also so many spe- uh, very targeted uh, experience you can get from others and that you learn from it. Yeah, and also denial is so problematic because it leads you to not talking about it. Mm-hmm. And you know, whether in therapy or in any other setting, you know, talking about it is mm-hmm. the way, mm-hmm. right? Like you need to talk about it. You need to talk things through. You need to mm-hmm. think things through while talking. Mm-hmm. And if you don't put, if you cannot for the life of yourself get over it yeah. and just admit and label it and yeah. get over the denial then you won't get better yeah. in a comedy do you talk about uh, uh, issues in life or your mental state um i don't mm-hmm. really i um i have a very narrow set of topics mm-hmm. i feel sometimes i'm trying to branch out a bit uh, but um The thing is, like, I feel, I recently recognized why I'm not that kind of comedian. And Mm -hmm. it is because I grew up, like, my comedic idol was George Carlin. Yeah, yeah. And George Carlin, his style is very, like, this is what's fucked up about society. You know, like, this and this and this. It's not like he's like, so the other day I recognized, I was talking with my friend and now I, you know, like, was not storytelling it was not about him as a person necessarily it was very much by him mm-hmm. like it's his view of the world but yes. it's about the world and mm-hmm. things happening mm-hmm. cool so you you don't have any uh, any story you, you never be vulnerable on stage um i f- vul- <sighs> i do have different styles of comedy that I pursue. Like if mm-hmm. I do like just, if you book me for a showcase, I'm gonna do like the hard hitting, mm-hmm. tested material, and it's like written word for word. Uh-huh. Um, but there's other shows that I've done, for instance, with Ori and so on, yeah. where it's much more free form, where mm-hmm. it's crowd work, essentially, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Like I've done shows like two hours of crowd work with Ori, which oh. is, in, some of them were fantastic, like the best shows and the worst shows I've ever done were in this format, right? It, it, it's like having sex, but only foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours of foreplay. Don't knock foreplay, foreplay is fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, Sam, you need to. <laughs> <laughs> he, he needs to learn. Yeah. And. Uh, I, not him, my boyfriend, who has the yeah, room yeah, yeah. back. Sam needs to. Uh, but. Um, no, generally speaking, it's uh, I do have moments where I very like in the moment connecting with the audience, and that is pure vulnerability. Uh-huh. In my generic material, uh-huh. not so much. No. Okay. Uh, at the end, I want to uh, ask another mental health question. Mm-hmm. I think it's actually uh, very interesting for me. Mm-hmm. So, when you realize there's something might going wrong in you, mm-hmm. like a uh, f- first, like, what are the signs for you to realize? Oh, maybe I should uh, look at uh, my mental health right now. Mm. Um, honestly, if you get to the point where you think you might have to mm. look, it's probably already too late. That's a good sentence. <laughs> if you. <laughs> If, if, if you start thinking, maybe I need to look after my mental health, it's probably too late. Like, okay. you should have started, like, a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, like, I I think, I mean, sometimes you will find yourself in a situation like that. And uh, when it happens to me, it is where I notice, like, things like, how long does it take me to reply mm-hmm. to the people that I like? Mm-hmm. You know, not even the people that are not close to me, right? Uh-huh. Because that might be never. <laughs> um, um, am I able to follow up on uh-huh. commitments? Uh-huh. You know, like when I notice that starts uh-huh. to slip, uh-huh. uh, when I find it hard to get out of bed, um, uh-huh. when I, you know, like I sense my willpower diminishing, that uh-huh. kind of thing. Um, that's 
computer science to uh-huh. me, but generally now I try to be very proactive, uh-huh. right? Like there's like a lot of discussion nowadays about mental health is mm-hmm. about this more proactive stuff. Yeah. Yes. And uh, which kind of seems to drown out like the actual, like there are problems that mm-hmm. you have to live with in mm-hmm. your life. And mm-hmm. if there is medication, probably mm-hmm. it's a good idea to take it, right? Mm-hmm. But um, there are a lot of things that physiologically support mm-hmm. your mental health. Mm-hmm. And it's, everybody knows them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all do. Uh, you know, like good sleep, mm-hmm. hydration, um, mm-hmm. you know, exercise, mm-hmm. all those things, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and the problem, of course, is trying to do all those things while you're depressed mm-hmm. is really hard yeah. because, like, you know, where do you find the energy? Yeah. So, like, I am trying to make sure that I do those things while I already have the energy. Mm-hmm to keep the energy. Uh If I get to the point where I already lost the energy, I need to build it up, then Mm -hmm. it was already a bit too late. So like I'm being proactive about Mm -hmm. it. You mentioned that you had uh, some issue uh, last uh, last year, end of last year. So uh, how do you realize you have issues? People told me. (laughs) Um, So, um, so, I had a lot of like personal things happening last year. I don't mm-hmm. want to go into yeah. details necessarily, but mm-hmm. I was struggling a bit and um, actually a lot. <laughs> a and, little bit. A lot. <laughs> and uh, at work, I was faced with a lot of very complex things mm-hmm. that I had been tasked with because I'm good at my job and mm-hmm. they thought, hey, we need somebody who can tackle this. And usually I could. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't. I was just impacted by personal stuff, by the pandemic in general, Mm -hmm. by too much work. Mm -hmm. And so like I started to become super unresponsive to everything, Mm -hmm. uh, way more unproductive Mm -hmm. than I thought was possible. Mm -hmm. Um, And like my manager, Mm -hmm. my line manager um, noticed, Mm -hmm. right? And Mm -hmm. I was blessed like Mm -hmm. uh, working for a company and a manager who Mm -hmm are very humane in these things that mm-hmm. recognize that mental health needs to be mm-hmm. protected that mm-hmm. you know and my manager just told me Francesco mm-hmm. like I'm worried mm-hmm. you know I can see you mm-hmm. struggling mm-hmm. I don't think you're admitting it to yourself mm-hmm. and um, you know basically I went on paid leave mm-hmm. um, I hadn't taken any vacation at all because mm-hmm. I was working so much which mm-hmm. was stupid yeah now thinking back like uh, i have the same issue like uh, i had a big breakdown last year in november and now i think back like i there's a whole year of pandemic mm-hmm. i uh since the pandemic started i almost didn't take vacation at all and i was working on weekends working in the evenings yeah. working on comedy and it yeah you yeah oh of course now i think back yeah. exactly and mm-hmm. um same for me and I was just happy to work for a, a company that uh, and a manager that both mm-hmm. were very humane in this thing and recognized the issue mm-hmm. and allowed me time off to recover and mm-hmm. you know get my shit together then you know yeah that's really lucky because uh, I, I know some people like when they have the issue with mental health it, it's uh, very shameful to admit at work yeah. and when they finally admit um also it's uh, kind of feel scary to go back yeah because uh, not every team every company every manager can understand this they they could simply just say it's your fault like you are not good at working you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I was i mean i think generally the company I work for does have very sensible policies around that mm-hmm. you know like they do great stuff uh, in my case, I was also blessed that like the mm-hmm. first year I was there, I did a really good job, and mm-hmm. so like I had a certain reputation, and people mm-hmm. know what I was capable of, mm-hmm. and so like when suddenly this other year I was like struggling so hard, mm-hmm. they, it was also easier to recognize oh something's wrong, right? Like mm-hmm. what's what's happening, and uh, yeah, you know, like on a personal level, you mm-hmm. know, like at work I've had horrible managers mm-hmm. at some points, and. Mm-hmm. 
who would actually enhance the That's stress weird. and yeah. make me feel bad and um, not support me but mm -hmm. denigrate me mm -hmm. and I you know I have a lot of bad memories from that that were awakened and I had mm -hmm. I was fearful it was going to happen again and mm -hmm. instead I was so blessed to have like yeah. this manager that was just a person and was treating me as a person are you going to send this to your manager okay. possibly <laughs> Possibly, possibly. <laughs> yeah. That's why you are saying all these nice things. Um, he's not with the company anymore. Oh, okay, okay. So, okay. so like, uh, I'm not like ingratiating you to. Anybody. Maybe that's why he's nice to you because you're like, yeah. I'm no, he's 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 been no. <laughs> don't be so cynical. Oh, uh, okay. Don't be so cynical. Oh. No, like, yeah. I know, like, um, at work it oftentimes sucks. You might have managers who don't understand who, or think that they. This is like a personal thing, mm -hmm. you need to get it sort of on a personal level. Mm -hmm. I had somebody who recognized I was mm -hmm. struggling, told me mm -hmm. that I was struggling and that I needed to take time off. And I'm so grateful because then I did and I started fixing the basics. That's a really great. Uh, did you have a burnout at other jobs before? Uh, yeah. A and uh, um, uh, how at, at that time, uh, previous to this one, uh, did you ever question maybe you are just not good at working? Um, yes, uh, it had actually become like sort of part of my identity to think like mm. you know a lot of imposter syndrome of like mm. yeah Ooh, you know like sure I've got my moments of brilliance but mm. overall like it's gonna be destined to fail and yeah. instead. Um, it's a weird story because if I look at everything I've done, mm -hmm. there's a lot of very strong work there, mm -hmm. right? And it's just like this, you know, how, monologue. How did you overcome this? How did you, like, after burnout, how did you have the confidence to go back to work again? Oof, I was a bit scared. Mm -hmm. um, particularly, like, a week, two weeks before, mm -hmm. right? Like, it started to, like certain anxiety about returning to work mm -hmm. and uh, it's all sounds cheesy but like mm -hmm. i it didn't go away entirely mm -hmm. um but b it was like i would meditate i would just like try to keep it under control i and i've got like a note in my notes app on the phone where i've got like quotes of people who gave me compliments mm -hmm. over the years right mm -hmm. like and then I read that and I remember, oh yeah, 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 no, like I fucking killed it back then and I did this great. And mm -hmm. yes, I am a very good people manager okay. when I find the time and energy or so like, and I can relate to my uh, team members, you know, and just basically fighting the inner narrative mm -hmm. that was negative with positive stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I find it, it is easier for me and, you know, like, please don't take mental health advice from me. You know, like, I'm just telling you what helps me. It's that when I try to suppress mm -hmm. the negative thoughts, they mm -hmm. get stronger. Mm -hmm. um, when I try to replace them and just shift mm -hmm. everything that has more promise for me, mm -hmm. right? So, like, I just, instead of saying, no, it's not true that mm -hmm. I saw you I'm like, look at all these nice things uh -huh. that people have said about me and hey, uh, that is a nice shirt you're wearing too, right? Like, I like my <laughs> yeah, shirt. it's a nice shirt. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's what helps me, you know, just, and it doesn't make it go away entirely, but it dampens it enough that I... I also ha had a burnout last year mm -hmm. and now I, uh, I need to think about going back to work. Mm -hmm. But uh, thinking about it makes me really, really anxious. Yeah. I feel, um, I, I kind of feel like people look down on me. Mm. I feel I'm not good at the job. Mm. I feel like uh, uh, my teammates probably just uh, being annoyed by me because I left for so long and uh, someone else was doing the job. Mm. And um, I feel uh, my the supervisor wouldn't trust me again mm. because uh, I'm not reliable mm. and there are just so many negative voices in me yeah. and uh, do you have any advice for me?
I don't know if any of this helps, but generally there are some thought patterns that help me. One is realizing that nobody cares about me mm -hmm. that much anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like like the, everybody thinks about themselves first and uh -huh. foremost. They're not thinking about me all yeah. the time yeah. and how much I sell it or something, yeah. right? Um, and uh, what also helped me is just accepting that the past cannot be changed. That happened. Mm -hmm. um, and the only thing I can do is like my behavior in the future and just like, you know, not try to pretend that nothing happened, but mm -hmm. more like I am going to do the best I can now going forward. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all these negative thoughts that stem from the past, if anything, are sabotaging me and mm -hmm. just try to dim dim them enough mm -hmm. that I can get through a work day mm -hmm. uh, the best I can. And mm -hmm. then like slowly you build your confidence. Like, And, you know, the way I think about the entire topic as well is like, I don't distinguish between work and life as mm -hmm. being so different. Mm -hmm. It's more like, do I have positive momentum in my life in general, right? Mm -hmm. And even now, like right now, I'm doing very well. You know, like I, I'm, I'm downright happy, which I haven't been in, mm -hmm. I don't know how long, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> way too long. And still, I have days where I'm very unproductive, and then like I just cut myself some slack, and I'm like, okay, today is one of those days. And I try to do whatever helps me get through the day without feeding the negative, right? Like, even if I just get out at zero, mm -hmm. that's a win for me. When you wake up, uh, is there some days you just cannot get up? Right now? No. But, uh, like, uh, in general? Um, yeah, at the beginning of the pandemic, for instance, I was, I was just in bed. Um, I was... You know, we were working remotely. Mm -hmm. Our company had shut the offices early, mm -hmm. and I was, you know, I was not turning on the camera, and mm -hmm. I was honestly, I was in bed mm -hmm. uh, a lot, um, work, working, mm -hmm. not being super productive mm -hmm. necessarily, but like. You know, yeah. And uh, when you cannot get up, uh, what do uh, you do to make you still get the day going? Um, What's your best practice? I. This will sound so dumb. Um, I just, at some point in my life, I train myself to the point where I just rip away my duvet uh, okay. and uh, jump up. Uh -huh. So like that is like one motion. Uh -huh. and so now I'm out of bed. Uh -huh. And I just basically trick myself not to think about getting out of bed, but just doing it by doing this weird sudden thing. Uh -huh. And then I shower, and usually the shower like resets my uh -huh. thinking a bit. I don't know. It's cool. it's like very mechanical, mm -hmm. right? Like if because I know if I'm trying to talk myself into getting out of bed, it's not gonna be effective. <laughs> and so like instead, I've got a very mechanical thing that uh -huh. just makes me get out of bed uh -huh. physically. Maybe you can like make a robot. <laughs> like a like a, a program it so in the during uh, in the morning like you just come to grab your blanket and run away. Yeah, um, if I find the motivation to. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the end, like what I recognized is that I used to travel a lot for work mm -hmm. and be in different locations, and that would fuck me up because. Mm -hmm. Everything that supports my health is based on healthy habits, first yeah. and foremost. And yeah. habits to me were very location tied. Uh -huh. You know, I at home I would have like certain things in certain places, and like this would remind me of this, and then it would just start. Like it would be like these ten positive things in the morning I would do that were all just interlinked and would cost me no willpower whatsoever. I mean, what I found most helpful for me is just trying to cultivate habits, mainly because habits by their own nature mm -hmm. are automatic, ideally, mm -hmm. right? Like, I'm not talking habits, mm -hmm. it's something like, sometimes people talk about habits like, mm -hmm. oh, 
I like to do this thing you mean irregularly. Like I mean, I mean things that happen automatically on mm -hmm. autopilot, like mm -hmm. things that you have trained yourself to do mm -hmm. so thoroughly that mm -hmm. you don't think about them, mm -hmm. right? And if I get like healthy habits mm -hmm. down, mm -hmm. it means that I don't need to spend willpower on them, mm -hmm. which means that on a good day, that's less important, but like mm -hmm. on a bad day, it allows me to hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, already get a lot of positive mm -hmm. things done for myself mm -hmm. without having to really get over mm -hmm. myself and mm -hmm. think and do. Yeah. And that's been uh, very, very helpful for me. And, mm -hmm. You know, and I think for everybody, like if you can manage to do that, I think that's. Do you have a morning routine now? Yes. Yeah. What are you consists of? Um, here in Berlin, it's mm -hmm. um, it actually starts the night before. Mm -hmm. So like, I plan my morning the night before. Mm -hmm. So what I do before I go to sleep is a, mm -hmm. I pick my clothes for the next day mm -hmm. and I put them on, on one place, oh. so that I don't have to pick it in the morning when I have less energy. Uh -huh. Um, and I write out my to do list for the next day oh. regularly, because if. On the if I do it the next day, like in the morning, like I'm foggy, I can't mm -hmm. focus. Mm -hmm. Instead, if I write my to do list the night before, when I wake up, I remember mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. and like I have a sense of like direction mm -hmm. for the day instead of trying to figure out what do I need to do today. Mm -hmm. um, but when I wake up and I don't set an alarm, like I wake up naturally pretty early, so like that's good. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't. I don't stop sleep in the middle of the REM cycle or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. That's helpful. Um, but basically it boils down to like, you know, getting up, showering, uh, weighing myself on a scale, um, then, you know, like putting on deodorant, putting on the clothes, mm -hmm. um, drying off the thing, mm -hmm. uh, getting coffee, sitting down, going through my to-do list, mm -hmm. and then, uh, then finish drinking my coffee and I meditate for a bit and mm -hmm. then I do some light exercise mm -hmm. and you know like that's all like how less, long do you that's like that's not even 40 minutes oh, okay. right so oh. and in that time I showered quickly mm -hmm. I got dressed because like everything was ready mm -hmm. I drank a coffee and basically I did 10 minutes of meditation and mm -hmm. maybe 10 minutes of exercise to get like a really you exercise better. in your work clothes like uh, in your shirt what you you exercise no no more more like uh, light exercise I mean okay. like go for a walk or okay. you know like something like that mm -hmm. no no like <laughs> I don't <laughs> that would make no sense and and uh, you write your to do list in the evening but you also as a comedian how do you uh, after shows how do you have energy to write a uh, to do list um uh it's just a very ingrained habit you know like i work according to gtd ideally mm -hmm. sometimes i fall off the wagon i don't know mm -hmm. if you know getting things done it's like mm -hmm. a methodology for productivity and so mm -hmm. like i usually already just need to pick what i need to work tomorrow from existing lists mm -hmm. it's not that much so more. you want like you have a show and uh, get home at 1 a.m like uh, quite tipsy you would still sit down and Right. Um, I mean, to be honest, oftentimes I would do it before leaving for a okay, show. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That makes but sense. But basically, I try to make sure that when I wake up, I already have like a plan for the day. Mm -hmm. Because if I try to make it in the morning, I'm always like being foggy and mm -hmm. I, I don't get as much mm -hmm. clarity. Cool. Yeah. cool. I, I think uh, this uh, with my current uh, depression. One thing I learned is also I need a morning practice, morning yeah. routine. I since the uh, pandemic, I, I every day I just wake up, wake up, feeling, uh, should I get up? Should I get up? Why am I not get up? I'm a loser. Oh my god, I'm horrible. I will never be able to get up. I hate myself. I want to die. <laughs> so every morning it's an uh, internal monologue like this and. Um, uh, since a few weeks ago, I start to uh, wake up, um, shower, mm -hmm. uh, brush my teeth, uh, meditate, uh, write write uh, my morning pages, mm -hmm. uh, eat breakfast, walk the dog, and uh, this is a bit long routine, I 
think it's around 90 minutes. Mm. Uh, but I, I do feel when I get all the all the steps done, I already feel, oh, today is already a quite good day. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm trying to get morning painting soon, but probably that's too ambitious to yeah. put in as well. Yeah. I, I, I find it like a morning pages, oh, I didn't believe in it. And uh, I start to write it. Then I really see like uh, things flow, but probably you need you mm -hmm. you you can. But I can imagine it's very demanding if you have a full time job to to write morning pages. I wake up really early usually, mm -hmm. so I would have the time, particularly now without a commute, mm -hmm. um, because journaling is journaling is one of the things and morning pages that I haven't gotten. Honestly, I wish I did because it is helpful. I never got into the habit of journaling, but uh, I, I feel morning pages is easier. It's, yes, I think Be the because, benefit is similar. Right? Yeah, yeah, benefit is similar, but uh, morning pages because the requirement is so low, just write anything and anything coming into your mind. Yeah, but as soon as you get into a flow, it's it's just easy to write. But when you have a purpose to write something, it's hard. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think it's a good habit. You can try it out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my last question and also my favorite question, because you know I come from China, we don't have comedy there. Mm -hmm. We have, but it's different. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I didn't grow up in a comedy culture. Yeah. I try to educate myself. So I asked every comedian I met, mm -hmm. what's your favorite comedy special? Yeah. Um, oh, a difficult question. I mean, the ones that got me into co comedy in general were George Carlin and Monty Python. Um, I would have to say the ones that I'm obsessed with currently, uh, Hannibal Buress, Life in Chicago, um, audio only. Like, I don't like the video as much, I mean, like just hearing the audio, the vocal delivery is just incredible. Um, and I, I cannot help but love David Tell's style. Mm -hmm. So like David Tell's specials. And uh, I've been re-watching the Taylor Tomlinson one, mm -hmm. and then Ali Wong, mm -hmm. and Dylan Moran. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now I mentioned so many, but yeah. yeah I, I don't know, current, current obsession, Hannibal Burris Life in Chicago. Cool, I will check it out. So last thing, do you want to talk with our audience? Uh, well, if you're listening or to this or watching this, you probably are interested in the topic. Um, but all I can say is uh, take care of yourself. Don't feel guilty about taking care of yourself. Don't feel guilty if you're going through a rough time. If you're going through a good time, reach out to your friends in a way that is just supportive. You know, there are ways of reaching out that puts burden on people. <laughs> Right? Just, yeah. you know, don't make me feel like I need to reply. Just yeah. send me something nice yeah. you know, and saying you like me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do that for your friends uh, yeah. if you can. Because, like, I feel wherever you might be on this wide area and spectrum mm -hmm. of mental health, um, we are not alone in this mm -hmm. and we should not be alone in this. So, mm -hmm. if you are feeling alone, I hope you find somebody who can help. And if you're doing well, reach out to others, particularly in this time. Yeah. Cool. Have the energy, have others. <laughs> and uh, yeah. stay, stay healthy and stay alive. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Oh, thank you. This is, oh, yeah, it's a recording now. Awesome. Hey. Hey. How, uh, how to start? I don't know, it's your show. Yeah. Hello, this is It's Mental Podcast.